Welcome to White Lecture Online. Now here we have the same tank we had in the previous video. The only difference is that we're not trying to find the pressure, but the buoyancy force on an object inside the tank at the very top of the tank. Notice that the tank is closed except for that small little opening which is open to the atmosphere. And the tank is with the water, the liquid, so the liquid is water, H2O, and the object inside the liquid is accelerating to the right with acceleration A. Notice the coordinate system that we have positive x to the left and positive y downward. Now notice there's not going to be any buoyancy force because the object is not down below the surface, it's right at the surface. Assuming the object is small enough so that we don't worry about the small little height, that we're essentially at the top of the, of the liquid, so there's no buoyancy force because it's down in the liquid in the vertical direction. But there's buoyancy force because it's away from the right side of the tank and the tank is accelerating to the right. And therefore, that object will experience a force on the right and a force on the left side. Now, how do we get the buoyancy force from that? And by the way, what is the direction of the buoyancy force? Now, if we have an object in the tank below the surface, we have a force at the bottom, we have a force at the top, the force at the bottom is greater than the force at the top, so the buoyancy force is in the direction of the larger force. So in this case, we need to determine whether or not the force on the right or the force on the left is greater. Whatever is greater, that will be the direction of the buoyancy force as well. Now what we know is that the pressure increases as x increases. Remember, the pressure in the horizontal direction, what we found in the previous video, was equal to the density of the liquid times the acceleration of the tank in the liquid times the distance x away from the right side. And that was at the top. Of course, the pressure anywhere else below the surface of the tank, we have to add the additional pressure caused by the weight on top of, the, of that uh, point as well. So if the pressure is equal to this, that means the pressure is a function of x assuming the acceleration is constant and the density is constant, so therefore the greater x, the greater the pressure, so the, the force on the left must be larger than the force on the right. And since the force on the left is pushing to the right, that means the buoyancy force should be to the right as well. So the direction of the buoyancy force, we now know, is to the right, because it has to be the same direction as the, of the direction of the larger of the two forces on the left and the right side of the cube. All right, now we're ready to find the buoyancy force. So we can say that the buoyancy force, by definition, is going to be equal to the larger force, the force on the left, minus the force on the right. And remember that we know that the pressure, by definition, is equal to force divided by area, which then implies that the force is equal to the pressure times the area, and of course we have the equation for the pressure, which means that the buoyancy force is equal to the pressure on the left, uh, let's see here, force on the left, um, well, the force on the left, which is going to be the pressure on the left times the area, so the pressure on the left times the area minus the pressure on the right times the area. And what is the pressure on the left? Well, in that case, the pressure on the left will be the density times acceleration times x plus the length of that cube. So in this case, the buoyancy force is going to be the pressure on the left, which is the density times acceleration times x plus l times a minus the pressure on the right, which is the density times a times x times a. And then if we multiply this out, let's see what we get. Then we need to know that the buoyancy force is equal to the, the density times a times x times a. The acceleration, this is the cross-sectional area, plus the density times acceleration times l times a minus the density times a times x times a. And then it's not too hard to see that the first and the last terms are equal, and because of the negative sign, they cancel out. So this cancels out with this, which means that the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the liquid times acceleration times the length of the box times the cross-sectional area. And then we realize that the length times the area is simply the volume of the box, so this is equal to the density times the area times the volume of the box. 
And then we realize that the volume of the box is equal to the volume of the displaced liquid and that the density is the density of the liquid. So the buoyancy force is equal to the density times acceleration times the volume of the displaced liquid. And that is how we find the buoyancy force of an object at the very top of the tank that's accelerating to the right. No buoyancy force due being inside the, uh, inside the liquid in a vertical direction, but because we're to the right of the tank, that's or to the left of the right edge, uh, because we're accelerating with accelerating acceleration A to the right. In other words, the buoyancy force would be zero in the top corner and increases as you go further and further right and would be a maximum at the very left of the tank, just like it would be a maximum as you go to the bottom of the tank. And that's how we find the buoyancy force in this particular case. That's how it's done.